right, so Volume 9 is happening in nebulously the future. Um, and every year I have predictions on what'll happen in any given volume, uh, but I never write it down. Uh, so there's one, no proof when I'm absolutely right. <laughs> and two, half the time I forget what I said anyway, as I get overwhelmed with the bafflement of handling whatever the fuck is actually happening in the given volume. So, I wanted to make this video to really lay down the law and tell you all what I expect for Volume 9. Now, I've got these ordered in episode groups. I'm assuming that there's gonna be 12 episodes, but I could be wrong, you know, but really the thing is that these are episode chunks that we're really looking at. So, while my examples here have episodes listed up to 12, if the volume actually has 16 episodes, my predictions don't change, it's just that things will take more episodes to get done. For example, one of my sections is like episodes 7 through 9, uh, and if there are 16 episodes in total actually, then instead that'll be episodes 7 through 12, you know? Like, more episodes doesn't mean more happens, it just means everything takes longer to get done. Um, so yeah, this is what I predict will be happening in Ruby Volume 9. Episodes 1 through 3 will be Ruby and Jean and Neo on the island. Things of note in this episode chunk includes they will react to Penny's death, which I think will include one of Team Ruby, probably Ruby herself, like, really overreacting at Jean and like yelling at him and being mad at him. They will also get some too long exposition about the island and how it relates to the gods, maidens, and or relics. This will be the primary reason they're on the island. It's like, because Miles and Carrie came up with some lore thing and that's what Team Ruby are doing here. They're not going to be going on a, an adventure of friendship or development. They're on the island to learn about a new lore gimmick that's added to the mix. Also, Neo will be finalized. Now, what does that mean? A couple of things. I believe that Rooster Teeth are at a phase where they cannot keep Neo anymore. She is in the way. They... She's... She, she's taken over Cinder's main goal of like, I hate Ruby, so... And now they just want to get rid of her. I think that they're like, we can't keep Neo around because she's in the way, she's too strong, uh, she takes the focus away from Cinder, we need to get rid of Neo, basically. Why else would Neo be on the island with them? So things that could happen to Neo include... Option 1. She could die. Team Ruby could kill her. They've done murder before. They can kill her. Or she could die to, like, falling. Or to some grim, you know. It could be out of Team Ruby's hands. But option one is just R Neo dies. Option two is that she learns Ruby did not kill Roman. Uh, so she no longer has her weird hate boner for Ruby. And decides to just leave. Like, just goes off like a dad going to buy milk. You know, just exits herself from the story. It doesn't look back. Option three is she pulls an emerald and decides to switch sides. This is the option that I want the least because I'm tired of that. <laughs> but if she does become good, she will either stay in vacuo, just away from Team Ruby, just like be like, I'll hold up here, I guess. She'll stay on the island, maybe like a hallucinating that Roman is there and she stays in dreamland thing. I've seen that kind of theory. Or she'll go off on her own, like Raven or Ilya, who are good guys but conveniently run away so that the writers don't have to deal with them anymore. That's what'll happen in episodes 1 through 3. Episodes 4 through 6 will effectively be a flashback of what Team Honor was dealing with while Team Ruby and friends were on the island. Like, episode 3 will end with them getting home, like, showing- just popping into the- into the vacuo desert, like, Pop, we're here. Wow. All of our friends are here. Isn't this convenient? And then episode 4 will begin with, like, just starting back at the beginning but with Team Honor. <laughs> so that's what these episodes will be doing. 
Things of note in this episode chunk include they will get to the town in episode four due to winter being the maiden like this big threat the big oh no how do we get through this desert problem that they established at the end of volume eight uh is gonna be immediately resolved we will effectively jump over it it will we will start the episode with them being like oh man can't believe we made it to vacuo town sure is a good thing winter was there to make the desert passable. <laughs> they will justify their actions of the previous volume. So like, Atlas fell because Ironwood was bad. Atlas got destroyed because Cinder is bad. Basically just deflecting blame onto other characters. Um, and that means no one gets to grow. No contemplation, no, no self-reflection. Just, oh man, we sure are justifying the writing of our characters. We can do no wrong. Most of their time will be spent peacefully learning about the culture of Vacuo alongside Team Sun and or Coffee. I do expect Team Sun at least to show up. I'd love for Coffee to be there as well. Um, but yeah, primarily they're gonna be sitting around and just like, you know, wow, the mountains of Haven sure are an interesting way for the cultures to be divided with the pores on the bottom and the rich on the top. And, wow, the atlas floating sure is an interesting way to designate the, the pores on the bottom in mantle and the rich on the top. It's gonna be the exact same thing they've done twice already. Uh, oh, the only other thing is that Ren and Nora will not behave any differently from usual. Even though they had their fucking like weird conversation about, Hey, I love you, but stop talking to me at the end of volume 8. Um, they're not gonna... Nothing's gonna happen with them. They are gonna just behave exactly the same. Maybe there will be a single glance between them, or like they both reach for you know, like a like a some scissors at the same time or something, and then they kind of have like an awkward like oh, uh, uh, ha, ha. and then that's it. That's that's literally it. There will, if anything, it will be a single second of mostly visuals, and then beyond that, they will just behave normally. These episodes are going to be. Boring. <laughs> Episodes 7 through 9 will be focusing more on whatever the vacuo plot is. Coming back to the present, where we have all of the kids reunited in the desert, this is what will be happening. It will be mostly minimal discussion of the kids' time on the island. <laughs> the island adventure might as well not have happened. That's, that's the biggest takeaway, is that that is just a thing to waste some time before the end of the volume, because Remember, nothing can happen until the final episodes, so you have to just think of ways to waste your viewers' time waiting for the end of the volume to happen. The Schnees will basically disappear. Whitley, Willow, and Klein are all here alongside Weiss and Winter, uh, but they might as well not. <laughs> They'll effectively just vanish into the background while Weiss is too busy uh, hanging out with her friends. Uh, which, by the way, the kids are primarily going to be sitting around doing nothing, but asking, what should we do? Just like how they always do. Just like how they did at Haven, just like how they did at Atlas, just like how they did in the streets of Mantle. <laughs> it's gonna be, but what do we do? Well, I don't know. We don't know what the bad guys are doing. It's gonna be that some more. <laughs> Winter will leave. She's gonna go to help Atlas or some shit. They can't have more than one maiden in play at a time. Winter can't stay here. She's too strong. It's the exact same reason why Raven left. It's the exact same reason why Penny had to die. Winter can't stay, so she'll go back to Atlas to like, I don't know, help Crow or something. <laughs> the bad guys are doing machinations in the background, like how they always do, and none of the heroes know about it. They don't know that, even though Emerald should tell them, uh, no one thinks to bring it up that Tyrion and Mercury are here um, indiscriminately murdering some people for no real discernible reason between makeout sessions or something, I don't know. As always, Team Ruby are going to be doing effectively nothing, while, as usual, the bad guys are the ones pushing the plot forward as Tyrion and Mercury do their thing, and Cinder also is back at Salem's mansion 
doing nothing as well. <laughs> Episodes 10 through 12 will be the bad guys suddenly initiating their big attack and the heroes stop them. Literally the exact same thing as that's happened with literally every single volume. The finale happens. Oh, and the bad guys are attacking! And then the heroes save the day. Wow, okay. Team Ruby will end up fighting either Grimm or like some other one-off bad guy like Cordo or Cardin. They, they won't be fighting any of the main bad guys. They'll be dealing with some other problem. Emerald will get to do the important battle, talking to Mercury a lot as she does so. It's mostly gonna be kind of like when Winter fought Ironwood, where it's like, I'm having a full monologue while I'm swinging my sword sometimes shittily. <laughs> it's gonna be that. It's gonna be Emerald v Mercury as the primary thing. Other friends, so Team Junior, Coffee, or Sun, will handle the other main threat. Like, Mercury will be an important element, and then, like, Tyrion, <laughs> we'll go with Tyrion, I guess, uh, is gonna be the one that Team Friends fights instead. Uh, and yeah, Team Ruby fight, like, one big Grim or something dumb like that. Uh, and that's it. The volume will end with no real character growth happening, with the plot not developing further, really. It's mostly just exposition dumping shit onto us again. But here are a couple of other bonus things I expect, primary of which being Velvet will be the maiden. No faffing around with a worthless old lady or a total stranger this time, just the Maiden will already be a character we care about, rather than wasting our time introducing a character but not doing anything with them, so then they can die, and then a character we already care about becomes the Maiden? Again? We're not gonna do that for a fourth time. We're just gonna have Velvet already be the Maiden. There we go. And why Velvet? Because we gotta have our one token Faunus character. Other things include, Tyrion will die. It won't be impactful, it will just happen. There's a 50-50 chance he dies from another bad guy or a Grimm. Mercury will sacrifice himself to help Emerald, also dying, because that's just how this show works. Oscar will get a new outfit, but only him for some reason. There will be island versions of the girls' Atlas outfits, where they take off a couple layers. They will inevitably look better than the just like OG versions of the Atlas outfits, because uh, the Ruby design's most fatal flaw is that they are overcomplicated and constantly over-designed, removing just a couple of layers will immediately make the designs look significantly better. Jean, Ren, and Nora, however, will not get any new alt versions of their outfits. They will not remove any layers, they will just dress the same. <laughs> Team Sun will also be there, hopefully, but if they are, only Sun and Neptune will do anything. Sage and Scarlet might as well not exist. Theodore has two options. Theodore is the final headmaster who we've primarily seen via the books. Not, he's not shown up in the show yet, uh, but Ruby did mention him by name, which is weird. How does she know his name? It's besides the point. So he has two options. Option one, he will be the only good headmaster for no reason. Weirdly, he's the only one who's trustable and nice. Option two is that he will also be working with the bad guys Again, for no reason. Just like how uh, Leo was just, I'm too, f I'm too much of a coward to not work with the bad guys. Or Ironwood being like, I inexplicably think it's a good idea to bomb my own city. There's an option where Theodore will just also be working for Salem, uh, but for no real given reason. How come Ozpin trusted? only rats <laughs> with his secret secret little mission of saving the world alongside crow <laughs> so by the way crow and the aesops will also not show up they are we're not cutting back to them they might as well be dead we're not getting any more crow or the aesops i've also made a bingo board uh because critter made one last year that seemed like so much fun uh, that I wanted to participate and do one myself. <laughs> a quick look over at what we have on the board, uh, off the island by the halfway point. Some of these are simplified to be on a bingo board. I fully expect, while well, specifically I believe they'll be off the island by episode 3, as a more broad 
kind of way of putting it, uh, the halfway point of the volume, they will not be on the island anymore. Theodore is the only good headmaster, self-explanatory. Atlas falling is Ironwood's fault. Again, the kids can't take the blame for their actions. They have to find a way to just say, no, it was Ironwood, he was bad. Velvet is, slash becomes the maiden, being a little bit lenient. They might waste our time with another old woman who doesn't matter again. Um, but I fully do expect it to become Velvet at some point. Mercury dies. It could happen. Winter leaves. She's not staying, I guarantee. Sage and Scarlet are not relevant. This only is uh, applicable if the rest of Team Sun are also there. <laughs> like, if we just don't see Team Sun, then that doesn't count. Like, otherwise, the bingo board could be full of shit like, you know, the... Professor Ublek is not relevant. Yeah, he's not showing up. <laughs> Ruby cares more about Penny's death this time. They 100% brought her back just to kill her again because people notably mentioned how Ruby seemed to care significantly more about Pyrrha's death than Penny's. Uh, and so, as is always the case, uh, Rooster Teeth decided, okay, then we'll just prove them wrong and do it again, but do it right this time, rather than just accept that they didn't do something well. <laughs> Sandstorm ends up not being a problem. I feel like this is guaranteed. The Sandstorm will be z a non-issue. It might as well- it, mi it might not even show up. <laughs> Scene one is showing that Pietro and Maria are okay. I didn't mention this, but uh, there has been quite the fan outrage over Pietro and Maria being completely excluded in the, uh, the, a the uh, Atlas evacuation plan at the end of Volume 8. Um, and again, because Rooster Teeth are exclusively reactionary in how they write their volumes, uh, scene one is gonna be showing them either being like, Oh boy, thank goodness we were able to get out of the, uh, Amity and get back down where we can start rebuilding Atlas, or a door will open up next to them and surprise they are at the desert, they just weren't there at the end of the volume for some reason. They're 100% gonna do that. Penny's death is used to explore Jean, also incredibly possible because they rewrite the same thing over and over regularly for these characters. Um, and Jean just got over his sad stuff with Pyrrha, and so what a convenient reason to be like, Oh man, Jean's really affected by having to take a life. No, oh, better not explore how the exact same thing could have been explored with Blake and Yang. This is a Jean, time to shine. Emerald is the important one. I, I do expect that. It's also self-explanatory, free space. <laughs> Four new important characters are introduced, at least, um, because Rooster Teeth love making up new OCs, and like, listen, I get it, same. <laughs> uh, even though the cast is ginormous, we are definitely gonna get- and th this it has to be four or more. Like, if we get three new important characters, you can't mark this one off. Theodore is also evil. This is contradictory to another one we have. We can't get both. You, you, we're not guaranteed a blackout on the bingo. Um, but uh, we're just kind of covering both bases here. He might be good, he might be evil. Those are the only options. <laughs> Neo dies, like a self-explanatory. Island version outfits, also self-explanatory. Salem doesn't use the relics for no reason. Yeah, she just doesn't. Uh, the lamp, conveniently, she didn't know the lamp's, um, uh, like, locked password. She didn't know to say Jin's name. Uh, there is no nothing like that for the, the staff. Uh, you could just use it. They're, they didn't need to know Ambrosius's name. They just go. <laughs> he just goes. Uh, but she still won't use either of them. Uh, because... Because that would mean giving her too much power and we can't let Salem do anything. The plot has to go on for seven more volumes. Ren and Nora are the same. Self-explanatory. The island isn't actually important. Uh, li like I said, I think it's gonna be mostly for some kind of exposition dump. Somehow it's going to be, I'm predicting, something like, Oh, this is the special island of bullshit to, you know, give the girls some magical upgrades because they're not allowed to grow through their own, like, perseverance and determination. Like, just growing as combatants. They have to get stronger by either having Pietro give them weapon upgrades or from the gods blessing them with some magical new powers. Uh, it's gonna be something like that. Like, you girls are destined to 
save the bullshit. Here's some magic sparkles. Now you can shoot lasers out of your eyes or something. So there you go. That's what it's going to be. But the island itself, not important. We're, n we're not going to be coming back to the island and no one's going to reference it again after this volume. Oscar gets a new outfit. Self-explanatory. Neo becomes good. Like I said, contradicting Neo dies. Well, I guess technically not. She could become good and then die. <laughs> Pull a hazel. Uh, but yeah. Tyrion dies. Fully expected. This is a wordy one. Blake slash Yang confess and it's treated like the two haven't been basically dating for three volumes already. Uh, they've 100% been waiting for a true confession kiss bullshit thing with Blake and Yang. Uh, because the the only way this show survives is via fan service. That's why Neo came back. Uh, and the show's been doing well enough that they haven't had to pull out the Blake and Yang confession yet. Uh, but that's backfired on them, and people are just upset that now they're queer baiting, uh, because they kind of are. <laughs> Being like, Blake and Yang are constantly together and always holding hands and are like inches away from really kissing each other. Uh, but they're uh, still having these weird, awkward moments where Yang's like, uh, um, I think you're pretty, uwu. And it's like, what is happening? <laughs> so they'll finally actually confess. And like I said, it's gonna be treated like, wow, they're in love. And it's like, yeah, they've basically been dating <laughs> for years now. <laughs> uh, it's not gonna be as good as I think it should be. Um, it feels bad. Feel bad for the Bumblebee fans. And finally, Team Ruby do nothing important in the finale. This one might as well be the free space. It's effectively guaranteed. Team Ruby have literally never done anything important in the finale across the entire show. Like, I actually thought about that the other day, how they have never done anything important in the finale of the show. So, yeah, there we go. That's the bingo board. This will be available. Uh, they'll probably link to it, be a link to it on my Twitter in the description. So click on that, I guess. Uh, but yeah, that's the video. That's it. Um, I, I'm a god, so watch me be 100% correct on everything. <laughs> no, yeah, I'm a bad bitch, you can't kill me. And he wants to give us a gift, but since we're not old enough yet, he gives us a letter and tells us to open it when I quote, there will come a day when you feel crushed by the burden of modern life. But when I haven't been ogling the strong, tall lesbian with trauma, I've been frequently hopping on Smash, trying to get my various mains into Elite Smash. Welcome to Nine Ball Island. <laughs> you don't want to know how it got that name. There's four dudes here and one dude who had a major accident. We call him the Cyclops. <laughs> Grandpa? Grandpa? No!